episode three of my new fashion segment that I offer on my channel where I review a designer and also dissect his or her past looks. Um, in today's video you guys I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about Helmut Lang because he's actually one of my favorite designers in addition to Margiela and Rick Owens. I really want to do Helmut Lang you guys because I didn't know so much about him as a person in his history and just how innovative he was. So I really like to do these videos, you guys, because not only do I get to tell you guys about what I learned, I get to learn too, so let's get into it. Starting off telling you guys a little bit about Helmut Lang. He was actually born in 1956 in Austria. His parents split when he was very young and then he had to live with his grandfather until he was about 10. And then when Helmut Lang turned 10, he moved back with his father in Vienna. And then as he started to become a teenager and he started to really notice the scene around him, it was like a really gothic scene during that time. And he started to become really inspired. He started to make his own jeans, you guys, his own shirts and jackets because he, couldn't find anything in the stores that really spoke to him so the best thing to do in that case is to make it yourself and that's what he did and then people around Austria you guys really started to take notice at home and laying his designs and you know started to commission him to make pieces for them and then that's what he started to do and in 1977 you guys he was only about like 21 years old and he opened up a small shop in Vienna where he would make shirts and jackets and then it wasn't Shortly after that, you guys, that Paris started to take notice. And during that time, fashion critics, fashion editors was just really moved by Helmut Lang's designs because it was just nothing that you really seen in fashion during that time, you guys. Because during that time, it was Mugler and Versace, just really gaudiness. In his 92 spring collection, he used a lot of like rubbers and plastics. It still looked wearable. And, and people had never really seen that or even thought that a minimal wearable look could be done with those type of materials. That's what he is actually most known for you guys is his minimal yet still deconstructive approach to fashion. Also you guys, Helmut Lang is really known to just present fashion in a way that is appeasing to real people. For instance, you guys, he had his models walk at a certain pace that mimicked like real life walking pace. And he just wanted to show that this is for real people and I just, I love that. Fast forward to 2005, you guys. Pamela actually chose to leave his brand for reasons that I actually can sum up with one quote that he actually gave to Vogue during an interview. And I want to actually read that for you guys because I thought that was very interesting. Pamela was asked, you have spoken of returning to your art practice after leaving your brand. What was his first iteration? He responded with saying, you guys, my intention was always to become an artist. I started experimenting to find my language and became sidetracked. I had the self-inflicted idea that I could do clothes as a second day job to sustain myself until my artwork would do so. As you know, it grew into much more than I expected. Fashion was always supposed to be temporary, okay? So as you can see, Helmut Lane wanted to really, really focus on his artwork, his sculptural design. Fashion wasn't even always supposed to be number one for him and for him to just excel how he excel. It's just like that kid in school that you think is goofing off and still ace the test, but you didn't and you studied hard. And then once Helmut Lane actually left in 2005, you guys, Prada bought the rest of his company. They actually bought 51% in 1999 and then they bought the rest of it once Helmut Lang left. And then in 2006, they actually sold Helmut Lang to Link Theory, which they also own Uniqlo Theory. Once Link Theory took over, they put Nicole and Michael Kolovos in place for creative director. And then you guys fast forward to today, Helmut Lang is run by Thomas Carlson. Carlson actually designed Made in LA for Rick Owens, which was his selfish denim collection. I thought that was really interesting. It just shows you just how fashion is just so connected. All right, you guys, so for this first look that I'm gonna be showing you guys is from Helmut Lane's Fall 1998 collection. And this collection, you guys, was innovative on its own because it was the first collection that was actually viewed on the internet. Prior to this, 
every collection was seen in person on the runway but Hemline was like no I want it available to everyone that wants to see it all you have to do is just go to his website and you could view the collection also just really shows you guys how innovative of a thinker that he was and just how he wanted to be inclusive of everyone the neon color of her top is just so striking with this khaki pant. Helmet Lane was just really known to only work with, you know, neutral colors. So beige, black, whites, creams. And when Helmet Lane did use color, you guys, it was just always a shock of color. My approach was actually a Helmet Lane top which I actually got at a sample sale, you guys. It is actually a collaboration with Shane Oliver. What Helmet Lang did, you guys, after the Colovos left from being creative director, they put what you call an editor in residence. And the editor in place that they had during that time was Isabella Burley, and she brought on different artists to, you know, do different collections. If 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 a men's look and I thought that would be fun to do as well and this was actually from Helmet Lang's spring 1998 collection. This collection you guys was just known to be very casual. He presented almost like a casual uniform so to speak. You see a lot of black and white. Also you guys from Helmet Lang's spring 1998 collection. This was the first sighting of the painter pants and the painted pants were actually inspired by Levi 501 style. So it has the same five pocket design and then he chose to use silver hardware for the rivets. It is actually real paint splatter, you guys. This is actually probably the most sought out piece from Helmet Lane's collection. This is probably the most talked about thing from his archives and what everyone wants their hands on. And it makes sense why, because I mean, it's so classic here with Lane and also just such a fun piece to play with in your wardrobe. And I would say that this collection too was just really striking in the fashion world because you see a lot of different other brands today also mimicking this uniform with using whites, blacks, and creams. Like if you look at Toe 10, that's just basically their color palette as well. And it's just because it's just so easy, you know, you don't really have to think about it. inspired by Helmet Lang's Spring 2000 collection. He really played with tailoring as well during this collection. You see more of a slimmer fit than his previous suits. All right, guys, so for this look, first off, I love Alec Weck. Okay, yes, he was known to use her as a model very, very often throughout his collections. Very clean look with a little bit of something being the shoe. I love the feather detail of the shoe. And also, I love the play on textures with this look as well, you guys. It just shows you, too, how you can wear an all-black look and still be very summertime appropriate. Which you pay your rent for? You ladies ain't got good kitchen at the kitchen, though. If love don't live here, what you pay your rent for? You ladies ain't got good kitchen at the kitchen, though. concludes this video i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did give me a big thumbs up let me know what you guys favorite look is from this video down in the comments also i would love to have dialect with you guys about him and lang or about anything in the comments so drop a comment regardless and i will see you guys in my next video peace